I want to welcome you to the Contract for Deed course overview. There's going to be a lot of very valuable information in this overview. So take a pencil and a piece of paper and a cup of coffee and make some notes. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. Well, we're talking about Contract for Deed course. And it's a course where you buy on terms and you use a contract for deed. The term agreement for deed or contract for deed or land contract or installment sale, it all means basically the same thing. So what is it? Well, it's basically seller financing where the seller gives the buyer the deed to the property, but after the buyer has paid for the property through monthly installments. Now these agreements state that the seller will convey the deed and convert outright seller financing once the buyer has made a certain number of payments as agreed. Now if you're going to buy under an agreement for deed or contract for deed, if you're looking for a home or investment property by putting little or no money down or without qualifying, this contract for deed is a great way to do it. It's fairly easy to get a motivated seller to do a contract for deed, even if the seller is concerned about their credit or concerned about the due on sale clause. The seller can feel more in control with the fact that the deed hasn't transferred yet, and this is important to some sellers who are concerned that you are not going to follow through with your side of the agreement. Now, as a buyer, it's important to know that many banks will allow you to refinance an agreement if you've had a regular seller finance mortgage. This can be very helpful if you need time to build up your credit and want to get into a house without needing a large down payment. And with a refinance loan, you don't need to put money down like you would a normal purchase loan. This means that you could purchase a property under an agreement for deed from a seller using no money down or little money down and then rather refinance the agreement for deed and pay the seller off. Now as part of the refinance you can also roll the closing costs into the loan and not only close with no money but also possible you could walk away with closing with money in your pocket. It's rare but it's possible. If you sell under a contract for deed, I'm going to put a big warning flag. Be very cautious about selling with a uh, contract for deed. If you own a property and want to sell it creatively, a uh, contract for deed is not your best choice, mainly because contract for deed is so much like a seller held mortgage that you have to, have to foreclose on a buyer if the buyer defaults. Now, in some states, foreclosures are done fairly quickly. So it might not be much of a factor, depending on what state you live in. Now, for the most part, if you want to sell a property with seller financing, but want to retain control and not have to worry about filing a foreclosure, lease options are your best bet. Now, we cover lease options in another section. Because many states require that you foreclose an agreement for deed or contract for deed, you will not want to use them when selling, but you do want to use a lease with option instead. Now, what if you're reselling when you're buying under a agreement for deed? How do you, what's your exit strategy? Well, if you're buying under a contract for deed or agreement for deed, and you want to resell the property, you can do this by doing a double closing with your buyer purchases the property from you while you at the same time use those funds to pay off the seller and get the deed. This is a simple process that most title companies can handle for you. Also, if you're buying under an agreement for deed, there's nothing preventing you from selling the property under a lease option. At the point the buyer exercises their option, you simply do a double close as we stated. Now, what types of property do you invest in as an agreement for deed or contract for deed. When it comes to the types of properties, uh, it's a good investment, is a good candidate if the seller is flexible enough. However, as a general rule, agreements for deed 
are only used by investors for buying rental property or on an occasional retail deal that's an FHA purchaser. These properties are almost always nice homes in nice areas needing only minor cosmetic work if the home needs any work at all. As a home buyer, if you can find a seller who is motivated or flexible enough, you can purchase virtually any house you wish. So let's just drill down to what the advantages of a contract for deed or agreement for deed are. You don't have to qualify. As for the advantages of using an agreement for deed when buying, it's basically a seller-held mortgage except that you get the title later. Now, because it's seller financing, you don't have to qualify like you would on a regular bank loan, nor do you have to put any money down if you found the right motivated seller. So little or no money is required. In addition to possibly not having to put any money down, there's no upfront closing costs. You'll be paying those costs later when you fulfill the terms of the agreement and take title. Also, you can refinance the agreement down the road. Most banks recognize a contract for deed as being a seller financing agreement and will allow you to refinance as if you had a regular mortgage with the seller. Because of this, an agreement for deed or contract for deed can be very helpful stepping stone in getting a bank loan without having to come out of pocket for a down payment or closing cost. Now, what are the disadvantages of an agreement for deed? Well, it does come with a couple. There's a due on sale clause issue. First of all, an agreement for deed or contract for deed does violate most due on sale clause issues and mortgages, even though most people do not realize it. However, many sellers are still willing to do them because if they feel that the bank won't call a loan due if the title hasn't transferred, and the payments on the loan are being made on time. Now, the seller may have to foreclose to get you out of there if you bought it on an agreement for deed. If you're, but So if you're the seller on a contract for deed or agreement for deed, one of the disadvantages, you almost always have to foreclose on the buyer in the event the buyer defaults. This is mainly due to the fact that an agreement for deed is considered an installment sale, which is basically a mortgage. And the seller also couldn't just evict the buyer as if they were a tenant. There is an exception in Ohio on a land contract. As a buyer, you don't always want to counsel the seller on what you would be done in the event you defaulted. After all, you as the buyer are supposed to follow through on the, on the agreement and not be in default. So the seller might wonder, you know, why you would be disclosing this. Also, every seller can seek legal counsel if they wish. You will, however, want to let the seller know that an agreement for deed does give rise to the due on sale clause, and at the same time, you want to explain to them that it's highly unlikely that any bank will call a loan due when the title hasn't transferred and the payments on the loan are being made. If the seller is reluctant to do the deal because of the due on sale clause, then you want to offer them a lease with option instead, with, and, and we'll go through that in another recording. So I want to thank you very much for listening to this introduction to Contract for Deed course. It's a wonderful way to buy a property without a lot of money down. And if you can build a portfolio of Contract for Deed purchases and either do a lease with an option exit or just a, a, a lease, this should help you. So thank you for listening to this recording. I wish you every success in your real estate investing.